myself there's almost like it's like a peak and then it's like a valley like you almost get like numb to it and then you're just like fine like and then obviously it gets suckier again but there's a certain period where you almost like dip off and like it's, you just so, you know. so it's it's almost like you're indirectly without knowing about it talking exactly about the stages of the flow state no, I, I no, I know. Uh, that's where like I draw a lot of <laughs> it's parallels. It's almost like it you like describe it without talking about it. Yeah. Well, I think it's like it them like using the flow state. I think it's just like paralleling off a lot of other people's ideas too. It's just like more putting in their own like succinct form so, uh, and using like their kind of backing for it. But I mean, there's some like kind so, of overlapping ideas from other things. So, so, you know, I think, um, I think I'm starting to see the issue because I try, I talk about this flow state stuff. I, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm a big proponent of this stuff because I kind of see what it can do for people. I think the big issue is that there's a stigma to something called the flow state. I think you say, oh, peak performance, all this stuff. It sounds very, you know, wishy-washy. It sounds like, oh, you know, power of the mind, you're going to get there. And it sounds like anyone who believes this is someone you're not going to believe, you know, but I think if you were to get rid of those words and, the, and I think that's why these books are so great to get rid of the flow state, you get rid of peak performance, whatever you want to call it. And you look at the science and, and what actually happens because they talked about multiple times, they connected, you know, EEGs, uh, to the brain, fMRI, and they would study the human brain. And when you're undergoing different things, um, you know, that involves stress or using your body, they found that your brain physically, chemically went into these states where, you know, you're, you're calmed down. And when you're calm, then you go. And it's exactly what you just said. You go up, you go up, you go up, you're stressing, norepinephrine. I studied that word, so I didn't get caught up on it. Neurotic yeah. goes up, it goes up. It you know, then you you relax, you relax, you go down, and then you're in flow. Flow. We don't have to call it flow. Um, then your your optimal optimal performance, and that's not that's not you know anyone saying this is what the flow state is. That's physically, biologically, what happens scientifically what happens to the body. And that's what all these studies have found is that that's what happened to the body. Now, what's interesting, which maybe I kind of want to ask your opinion on, um, because like I said, I say this to a bunch of other people when I get the same reaction, they're not going to say it out loud because they probably don't want to hurt my feelings, which is fine. I get yelled at any day anyway. But what do you think it is about calling something the flow state and this is you know this is what's going to drive you to excellence this one thing what do you well, think is about that that drives people away well i think i think the biggest thing is understanding and relatability like if you say something that someone doesn't understand then they're just going to basically just, just write it off you know or they're going to put it towards other things that they do understand and like like either it sounds like you're a druggie or it sounds like you're trying to push them in some mlm they don't want to join so uh i think that's probably the biggest issue if you talk about like when they say peak performance like oh, okay well that's something you know it's like that's something i can get my, get my head around so and not to say that you can't talk like the flow state but in in anything it's like you need to approach someone to the term that they understand and center around what they understand and then you can gradually kind of move them into like what the reality is yeah. but you got to center it's got to be them centric if you're trying to explain it in such a way that you would understand it then they're never going to get it it's never going to be anything valuable to them uh that's a good point so how do you i mean there's how many billion people in the world 7.4 billion is it even possible to well i mean it basic i mean really it's like anything else it's basic sales ta sales understanding like sales or anything or just you know being persuasive it's you know you ask a couple questions you try to get them in a hole so if i was going to try to convince somebody i'm doing this i would be like have you ever thought about like peak performance before and then see what their answer is oh wow blah blah what are your thoughts about that blah 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 oh wow that's awesome have, have you ever heard about this oh no have oh wow okay when, and then you ask them a question kind of turn around uh, do you ever wish that you could just like really get into a state where you just focused and and then they're like yeah be so honest with you and then wow dude have you ever read this book it's like no oh wow this thing changed your life what it's like yeah it changed your life. like 
those kind of like that's kind of the journey you want to walk a person down uh but i mean it's like anything else like that's it's just a process of asking the right questions getting them to getting you to understand them and you presenting it in such a way that they understand it that provides value to them and then you take it off from that yeah that leads that actually leads into another um concept that i've thought quite a bit about um, you look at, you know, the current state of the world today, the current political state of the United States, of what's going on in the rest of the world, et cetera. There's a lot of wars. There's a lot of fighting. There's a lot of polarization. And uh, you kind of sit there and you're like, is it possible to stop any of this? Is it possible to stop this? And, you know, the big answer without going into it is no. Uh, I don't think it's possible to do it right here, right now. I don't know if one single person can do it. But what I do start to think is, well, you know, if you're able to understand someone, if you're able to understand where they're coming from and you label that, you let them know that you know where they're coming from, do you think that uh, maybe that would at least calm a little bit of the tensions? Because it seems like the biggest issue is you've got these Republicans on the far right or being driven far right from, from you know, media, social media, all that stuff. The way I see it is that the media and social media, the things that are telling us what to do and what to believe, I think they're driving us apart. You see the people are being driven far right. You see the people are driven far left and they're pulled so far apart that uh, they're like, well, this doesn't make sense what this guy's saying. Uh, how, was he was he an idiot? He's not seeing anything that's going on in the news. And then you got this guy over here. Well, what the hell is this guy doing? He's an idiot. You know, he's not listening to what the news is saying. And they both say the same thing. And instead of coming together and saying, hey, man, what are you, where are you getting these ideas? They're just saying, hey, fuck you, pal. You're an idiot. Hey, hey. Yeah. Fuck you, pal. You're an idiot. No, and it keeps going on and on. Well, I mean, it's just they're not looking for understanding. I mean, I think for some reason people get very like up in arms about someone having a different opinion than you, which does not matter. It just is completely pointless. It's like, well, who cares? It's like if you think you're right, then you're still right, whether they have a different opinion than you. That's that's what being right means. It means you're right, regardless of whatever someone else thinks. You're right. Um, you mean you mean you're right in terms of what makes sense to you and what you're understanding, yes. or right yeah, in yes. terms of actually right? Like, well, I mean, if you feel like you're right, then you might as well be. I mean, at least in your own head. I'm not saying in reality you are, but at least in your own head you're right. And uh, for me, it's just like they don't look for any understanding in the other person or any perspective. Like, the thing that I've seen, kind of living in different areas and talking to people, is just like there's just no perspective. It's like one group doesn't see the any of the play to the other and doesn't know about it and the other group doesn't see any of the play to those people and understand and it's like like you always get a people all mad at like rural people for being republican and like really voting for those kind of things because they're like well you don't make very much money like this isn't pro you but they also don't get the mentality of the people like that and who live in an area like that i mean they're very much more self-sufficient than someone living in a city and they very much see like their money is theirs and they very much don't want to give it away to someone else because they're like, I do all of this myself. It's on me. I want to keep as much as I can. And there's also different people in cities that, that rural people don't get. It's like, they don't understand. Well, if you live here, it's absurdly expensive. There's no one to really help you. There's no safety. There's no this, no that. And there's, it is hard and in a different way. And so they also don't see why those people want those kind of like little things to help them out. Uh, so it's, you know, there's two sides to every story. Yep. Um, and neither side wants to listen to the other side. So it's just, it is what it is. So, I mean, what, what do you think is causing people to not want to, it, what I, what I garnered from what you just said is it sounds like that people don't want to listen to what the other person's saying, or they don't want to understand the other person. So what, I mean, what would cause something like that? Uh, I think the biggest thing is they want, they want them to understand them before they want to understand so like i don't think that if you if you want some like really like what either side very two polarizing people talk i'm pretty sure if you like had one that was like i'm going to listen and the other one was like only wanted to talk like if you gave the person that only wanted to talk to the person that only wanted to listen the person that only wanted to talk after a certain point would be willing to listen after they got everything out everything they had to say first was like okay keep going blah blah, blah. just really impacting it all then they would be willing to listen to the other person because they got a chance to say everything they wanted to say. But 
really don't it, it, like that's the only way it works but that gives one side the like has to give it and just say all right you can go first one all right it'll, it's, it's dumb exists. because if anything that's where you want to be you don't want to be going first if you go second then you can build an argument based off their argument one side has to give in that's that's the thing and neither side wants to give in for the most yeah, part. or it's a perception of giving in because even in my scenario it's like if anything it's more beneficial for you to listen to them than convince them that you're right if you listen to them then you can frame it in such a way that you're right if you do not listen to them and just say stuff to them then you know nothing so they, they're just guessing well you do know something you only know what you know though you don't learn anything new yeah no i mean essentially it's like you can't like really play to like their what they want you know because it's not like I mean, especially in some of these ideas, it's not like there's not plenty of overlapping things and it's just like framing it in such a way that makes sense to them. But people don't want to do that. People don't want to do that, man. Well, also it's a nuanced know. approach. It's nuanced, takes patience, takes practice. Yeah, I don't know, man. I think um, I think that, that definitely says, you know, the way to do it is someone's got to kind of bite the bullet in a, in a sense, bite the bullet a little bit, give in a little bit so that you can both come to an understanding and the tempers aren't raised. Cause I mean, dude, if, if everyone could do that, I, I have I, my hope, my theory is that if everyone could do something like that to understand each other before coming at each other, which is fighting human nature, which is very difficult, very difficult thing to fight our nature. At least they have an understanding of it, then they might be better off. But if everyone could do that, Maybe we'd have less wars. Maybe we'd be more huh. productive. Maybe we'd be more successful as a society, as oh, yeah. a country, as human beings. No, think about wars. Wars are stupid. Like, it's like we're literally the dumbest thing you could do because you know what's going to happen at the end of the war? Someone's going to win. Yeah. Someone will win. And you know what sucks? Is both sides had people die. Both sides spent a lot of money. And whoever fucking won now has a much suckier area to go take over. Yep. Now, if they'd somehow just worked it out in the beginning, then the person that would have won would have won anyways, but no one would have died. It would have taken over a better place and maybe the other people could have negotiated a better deal for themselves. Uh, <laughs> it's like, it's just all losing. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, theoretically it sounds good, right? It sounds really good on paper, uh, but you know, we're sitting in